Hi everybody, it's Dave from Wing Chun Mind Force. Welcome to another bus talk. Firstly, I want to apologise for my missing teeth. That's from, I believe, getting punched when I was a teenager by this thug. Smacked me three times in the front teeth, got it hurt. But um, yeah, it broke over the years and it's just finally fallen out. <laughs> so I'm getting another falsy soon. Today I want to tell you about why Wing Chun was a woman's art and why a little woman can easily beat a big man. And I'm going to use a real example to explain this to you. And when I started Wing Chun, I found out the strangest idea that a little woman could beat a big man because I knew that in my youthful strength, having been a labourer, a kickboxer, a surfer, a weight trainer, I was way, way stronger than just about any woman I ever met. So I thought, well, how could a woman possibly beat me? And then when I started Wing Chun, which I did because of Bruce Lee, I didn't really know what Wing Chun actually was. I was surprised to find out that this art was based on not using muscle strength, which seemed absurd to me. But it was actually a little Chinese teenage girl, amazing practitioner who he told me that first off and I thought okay look I'll just believe you I don't know how this could possibly work but I'm just going to go along with it she showed me a few things that amazed me and she didn't have a very high level of skill but she was pretty amazing and then about two years along I started training with a master called Susanna Ho in Sydney at um her Kwoon in Rose Street in Hurstville and Susanna had been a student of Sigung Chu Shong Tin for about 11 years. I'm just moving down the back here because the wind noise is a bit, bit strong. So she'd spent 11 years in Hong Kong full-time learning with Sigung and she's one of his, his best students I believe and at first she just had us doing uh, the Seal Nem Dao form and practicing single Chi Sao and after a couple of months I started doing double Chi Sao. She was very strict but very relaxed and we used to have Chinese tea on the boil out the back and we had easy listening music playing which I didn't like particularly but because of her and because of how much I loved training with her I got to um, sort of like it a bit. It sounded like Kung Fu to me. So things went on and I could feel something really powerful in her arms when we rolled, but, you know, she never punched me or never showed off any kind of real power. So I, I just believed that she knew what she was doing and that was it. But I still hadn't really seen why women could be more powerful than an ordinary man who doesn't know Wing Chun. Then one day this guy came into the school and wanted to join, but he told us, he told Sifu Susanna that he'd trained for 11 years in another city, training Wing Chun, and he obviously thought he was pretty good. So she said, okay, um, you know, what do you want to do? And he said, can I, can I roll with you? Fair enough. They started rolling and it immediately became obvious that he thought rolling was having a bit of a spa. So twice he tried to slap her in the face and twice she just seemed to completely neutralise whatever he was coming at her with. And he was a huge guy. He was, I'm six foot, he was taller than me, very solid guy. And I sort of started to move forward as did a couple of the other guys when we saw him trying to slap her because it wasn't on, you know. <laughs> she didn't say let's have a fight. Anyway... He tries the third time to slap her and she didn't get angry. I saw no change in her face, but she just took the slightest step forward. It's like she just moved and her arms just expand a little bit. And this guy went flying through the air, probably three, four feet backwards. He hit this wall and I'm convinced that he was off the ground. I, I that's what I remember. It was sort of miraculous. All of us just stopped in awe going, my God, how is that possible? And it, what it looked like was as if he'd been shot out of a cannon. Like he just 
boom. He just, it wasn't like a push. It was like he was just picked up and flung. And this guy's standing there looking really shocked, like what the hell just happened? And she's completely in control. She says, let's see the form. So he does the form in a really stiff way, extremely tense, you know, really locked up, all his muscles tense. As he's been undoubtedly trained for 11 years, somebody's idea, you know, somebody who doesn't understand what Wing Chun's about, thinks it's about developing really powerful muscles or something, which doesn't make sense. So she says to him, look, I'll train you, which I thought was quite gracious because the idiot had tried to hit her three times. She said, I'll have to start from the start. You know, you, you do it all wrong. You know, everything you're doing is wrong. So I'm prepared to train you, but we'll have to go back to the beginning. And he obviously didn't like that. You know, after 11 years, his ego had grown pretty big. He thought he was... He probably thought he's a master, you know, for all I know. Maybe people often think that 11 years, yeah, I'm a master. That's an incredibly long time. So he um, he stormed out of there, jumped on his big motorbike and roared off. And I remember thinking, man, you really just missed out on an opportunity of a lifetime. Didn't you see what that little lady just did to you? She must have been 45, 50 kilos, very slender person in her early 40s not a young girl um if you know Susanna you know she's got real steel in her and um she's not somebody to trifle with but she's a very kind person as well anyway this guy never came back but I was convinced then and there that this thing was fair dinkum to see Susanna fling this monster flying like that I thought wow I've got to have that and I realized that a big guy like me if I could get to that level of internal power I knew that's what it was I'd heard it in theory but now I'd seen it I went wow that thing's that's actually real and I never got the chance to to meet Sigong Chu Shang Tin but I learned from people like Susanna who are very close to him and told me, you know, the essence of what he was on about. So that's my story today. I, I just wanted to, I've been talking to friends about why Wing Chun will make a woman really powerful. Well, a little person, you know, a small person, a slight person. And um, it absolutely will, because it's a whole different way of generating force, a whole different way of generating power. It's so much more powerful than muscle, it's absurd. And when you see it and taste it and feel it, you become addicted because it's like magic. And yeah, it just never stops being interesting to me. 25 years of Wing Chun, I'm not all bored by it. But it's, for me, it's like, uh, it's like going on holiday every time I practice Wing Chun, I just enjoy it so much and the feeling of peace and softness and power that flows through me is quite exhilarating and I'm not saying I don't have days where I don't I'm not really that on but I have some days where it's just bliss and I put on my own sort of music I don't listen to easy listening even though Susanna loved it so much I I listen to traditional Chinese harp music and that little sort of uh, Chinese violin or I like really traditional Indian music, but whatever works, you know, just get yourself into a peaceful space and work on being gentle. <laughs> work on being gentle and soft and empty and effortless. You know, soft as silk. And if you can really believe this is possible and it takes faith because it doesn't really make sense, if you can really just give up trying to be a macho man or a macho woman, let go, it's incredible what's possible, really incredible. So I'll leave it at that, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.